If you were Jesus, having just come back from the dead, and you went to appear, who would you appear to first? Would it be Barabbas? Would it be Herod? Caiaphas, the high priest? Maybe Pilate? Uh, maybe the Pharisees that said you weren't the Son of God. In other words, what sign would you give to prove that everything you'd said before was true? One of the interesting things about the first Easter is that Jesus appeared to none of those who didn't already believe in him. He made 12, 14 different appearances, and none of them were to people who did not already somewhat believe. Isn't that ironic? It could be that the purpose of a of Easter is not so much uh, evangelism. He wasn't trying to prove that he was alive. He was trying to reveal himself to a small circle of followers like us in different ways. Some of them would see with their eyes. Others would recognize when they heard with their ears. Others, when they saw him do the same things he did before, like break the bread. Others, when they heard his voice, interpret the scriptures. So Jesus made several different appearances in several different ways to prove to his disciples that the way he appears has now changed. This is why many didn't recognize him. They were looking for one way of seeing him, and he was appearing in different ways. Well, the importance of this is that if we think of Easter as the revelation of Jesus Christ, not just the resurrection, but the way that Jesus appears in the world today, then Easter has a much fuller, richer, and deeper, more mysterious meaning. The other reason that uh, Jesus uh, came back from the dead and gathered with his disciples was to commission them. Today we talked about one scene in particular in John chapter 20 in which he breathed onto them the Holy Spirit. It was on Easter night, not on Pentecost. It was the night of Easter, that first Easter, when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit into the lives of the disciples. This has powerful implications for us. It means that everything we do is done in the power of the Holy Spirit. It means that the work we're doing today, even the stuff that seems to be pretty mundane or not that glamorous, even the jobs that we hate, can be done in the power of the Holy Spirit. And if it is, then it is the work of Jesus. As I said earlier, there is no sacred and secular work. There is only sacred there are secular workers, but there is not secular work. The work itself means very little. It's the mindset of the person who goes into that job. So this week, as you go into your job, think of yourself as being an extension of Jesus Christ. Think of yourself as having the same spirit that Jesus possessed and think of the work you're doing as being an extension of the work of God in this world. Everything you do can be done in the name of Christ with the power of the Spirit. This week as I pray for you, that is how I'm going to pray.